We're here at San Francisco's Noise Bridge in the heart of the Mission District. We're going to show you how to take this toy helicopter, pull apart the transmitter, connect it to a computer, and let you fly it with your brain. Now the way that it works is we use this EEG headset to monitor your brain waves. You can think of it as a radio, and this electrode that rests on your forehead is the antenna. Pretend you're at a baseball game, and you're standing outside the stadium. Now, you can't see the players on the field, but you can hear when the crowd cheers, and you know something exciting is going on. Well, when the crowd's cheering, that's how we know that you are focused and paying attention. And we're going to use that to turn this into this. Noise Bridge is a hackerspace. It's a place where people with common interests, including technology, machinery, and art, can meet, socialize, and collaborate. Operating is a nonprofit and full of a friendly community and all of the necessary equipment, it's the perfect place for our modification. We begin our work by opening the packaging and taking apart the remote control for the helicopter. The remote features two joysticks, which control the flight of the aircraft. On the circuit board inside, the joysticks connect to potentiometers, which alter voltage as it passes through to a microcontroller. The microcontroller measures each voltage level and assigns a number to the joystick's position. The numbers for each joystick are then passed on to the transmitter, which communicates with the helicopter through radio signals. By using a microscope, we can check to see the manufacturer and part number for the chips on the circuit board. In this case, the part numbers and details have been etched off and we have to start from scratch. Next, we connect the pins of the transmitter chip to an oscilloscope to determine the characteristics of the signal sent to it from the microcontroller. We can see here that the signal is digital as opposed to analog, and by zooming in we can see some of the verticals which contain the data for each frame of communication. Knowing the signal is digital, we can now examine it in detail using a logic analyzer. We are able to measure the frequency with which frames of data are sent, including the baud rate, format, quantity, and content of the characters in each byte of the serial protocol. Here we can see each of the 14 bytes which together summarize the position of each joystick on the remote control. By zooming in, we can begin to decode the exact values for each joystick. Now that our data has been collected, we need to carefully desolder the transmitter chip from the rest of the circuit board. With the transmitter chip removed, we take a prototyping board and create a simple circuit which we can use to fly the helicopter from the remote control as previous, fly it from a computer using a USB to serial cable, or connect the computer to the original remote's microcontroller and read the data frames without needing the logic analyzer. In this terminal window, we are printing the raw data frames direct from the microcontroller. We can see the throttle data change as we move the joystick up and down. Puzzlebox Synapse is used to connect to a NoraSky Mindset EEG headset. Attention and meditation levels are calculated from measurements taken by an electrode resting on the user's forehead. On this screen, raw EEG brainwaves are visualized in real time. Here, we can see trends of attention and relaxation plotted over time. Finally, Puzzlebox Brainstorms connects to the EEG data source and uses calculated detection levels to fly the helicopter. When concentration and relaxation are above a certain threshold, the helicopter hovers in the air. If these levels drop, so too will the helicopter land. Macros have been pre-recorded to fly the helicopter forward, hover, and land at will. 